a lot of people are already starting to ask if and when will the flames get better, even more tolerable. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me here today. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Today, we are talking about the final six games of the Flame season and what can we take away from them even if the Flames don't walk away with, with points. And we're going to reevaluate this summer's plans versus the, the mess that was last summer, heading into last offseason. And th- the big question of after the summer, does it get that is all we can hope for. But make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Flames wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. It is so hard to believe that we are in the final six games of the Flame season because I remember sitting down with Nick at the start of the season and saying, We went six months with no flames hockey and now we're here again about to about to do the very same thing but this year we we knew was going to be not great but this very small the finish line the home stretch you're rounding third and you're almost home is really what you need in order to really set yourself up for next season. And we've talked a lot about that here. But remember in school, when you, like grade school, when you were learning about probability and you would put like blocks that were like different colors or shapes in a bag and you would like pull them out to see, you'd be like, what's the probability that I pull a red triangle? And then it it would be like one out of six, but you don't know that as a child, and then you got to experiment. Well, that's what the Flames are doing here. And that's kind of what um, we're looking for. We're looking for any and all solutions, possibilities, variables, <laughs> because this isn't about accumulating more points. This isn't about making that final push for the playoffs. This is about finishing 18 periods of hockey and packing up and starting again in August as a team. It's just, you just got to finish strong, whether that's going out on wins or having strong, like individual performances where you really feel like players turned a corner or, you know, morale is high I that that's like the biggest thing you want you want morale to be high because that's that's what's going to keep this team going I would say and I I do think that Huska has given us uh, a lot of different combinations and we've seen certain shakeups in the lineup like Zary uh playing center which is I feel like a perfect example of you know, getting whatever you can, whatever combination you can get. Uh, Connor Terry has not played center since juniors. Um, he was drafted as a center, but moved to wing. And then obviously, you know, just shaking things up a little bit. And I think that that's really good because you are, you know, he's a hybrid. He does a little bit of both and you want to get the most out of your players. And if you can get a center out of him, and, you know, you can 
really push him to that and then, you know, bring in another winger or whatever the case may be, so be it. Like, why wouldn't you do that? Um, you're going to want to see Dustin Wolf more. I think that Wolf should start more or just about half of these games. So he's starting tonight against the Sharks um, after a really tough loss against them a few months ago. So, you know, this is his kind of redemption. And at the end of the day, this does not matter. He's going to need to <laughs> perform uh, because uh, he's a goaltender. It's his job, but also he has contract negotiations in this in the summer. Um, what, what are you going to do with Coronado? He is not a fourth line winger. You got to move him up and move someone down. I don't know why Dryden Hunt is playing so high in the lineup. I think he's good. I think he's effective, but I don't think that limiting Coronado is really uh, more beneficial than having Hunt up there. And you have to kind of start looking at like what your lineup might look at look like without Mangiapane. And we've seen that he's missed five straight games due to an undisclosed injury. He's probably coming back tonight, but you know, what are you going to do without Shillington too? I mean, they, these are the things you have to think about because while the flames are more than likely going to enter the season with Mangiapane, and more than likely re-sign Shillington, you have to account for all of these things because it's not just a short-term picture. You're giving yourself more data to move forward with and to make good decisions with. Greer is the only forward that is not under contract heading into next season. Do they extend him? Do they see a value in extending him? Is it you know, his physicality is something that the Flames have been sorely missing. So maybe that is something that the Flames really continue to just, you know, it's a low risk, medium reward situation here. And you're going to just continue to lay down the building blocks. You've laid the foundation and these building blocks are not going to be like permanent you you hope that the at least the structure is sound moving forward but you might you're gonna have to play a little jenga and you know adjust on the fly sometimes and this is where you see what positions or what roles can players grow into what it what are some things you can adjust in the way that they play and it's not just for pointing out the negatives, it's how you can enhance a player as well. And I think it's important because we do talk a lot about the unfortunate Debbie Downer side of rebuilding. And there there are still some, you know, little bright spots. But coming up next, we're going to take a look at this summer this summer's, I guess, to-do list uh, versus last year's set of challenges. And we will be right back after the break. But before we do that, I do want to tell you about our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is the official sports book partner of the MLB. NBA, America's number one sports book. It is time for playoff hockey in the NBA, MLB, and baseball's in full swing. And FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Playoffs, playoff hockey is one of my favorite things to bet on because you just set up like ridiculously easy parlays. Like, you know, uh, Connor McDavid, anytime goal, Leon Dreisaitl, three shots on goal game, and, you know, maybe a money line. You, you, you can't go wrong. And I'm sorry for using the Oilers as an example, but they are the closest team to the flame. <laughs> Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is super safe, secure, and easy to use. 
What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. I remember this time last year, there were a lot of questions because you knew you were leaving the season with a lot of pending UFAs for the following year and a coach that not everyone I would say a majority of the locker room did not vibe with. And you were lo- you were losing a general manager. Like it wasn't official yet, but Brad Tree Living was not extending. He was not signing a contract extension here. So last year's set of challenges were just very different. This year you are looking at a, a Jacob Markstrom trade. This is that is probably going to be the biggest storyline out of Calgary this summer, unless something else happens, which is very possible. But we saw how big the Markstrom storyline was around the deadline. That did not work. That did not work out for whatever reason. And now you have the summer to make things work. If that is something you so choose. And you're also looking at potentially trading Mangiapane. I mean, it's kind of agreed upon, I would say, by a large part of the fan base, as well as, uh, I believe it was Julian McKenzie from The Athletic, who said, you know, you're trading Mangiapane. Like, that's not really a question. Um, And I think that's a really good idea. And this is coming from someone who has (laughs) really enjoyed Mangiapane in my four calendar years of covering this team. Um, But you are just, you're looking at something so different. You aren't looking at what direction you want to go, who is, who's leading the team and who's leading the front office. Like you have those pieces in play. Could there be other personnel changes? Of course. That's always a possibility. Like no one, of course, it's like no one's job is guaranteed as we've seen. Um, so shakeups can happen, but you're looking at it. It feels like those, that structure is good. It is sound. And you're also going to be looking at how to improve your team because it's not just, okay, what can we get rid of? It's do we extend Sharon Govich? What is, what does our long-term plan look like? Do we just give him a two to three year bridge deal and then let things kind of play out from there? Or do you lock him up long-term? He's not going to be overly expensive, but do you want to be in a situation long-term after one proven season in the organization? That. I would love to see Sharon Govich, but I feel like it might be worth exploring. I mean, you would be silly not to explore your options, I would say. And you also have to look at uh, Kuzmenko because to me, the Kuzmenko situation is very different from the Sharon Govich situation. Kuzmenko, well, both players we're not working in Jersey and Vancouver. Um, Kuzmenko came in. I mean, both came in on, uh, you know, kind of big trades. So I do feel like there is more of a sensitivity with the Kuzmenko situation. I think that that is something that is going to be kept under wraps. I think that, I'm not I'm not entirely sure why, but I feel like the only person that's gonna be really like everyone else will know at the same time what the decision is. I don't think that he signs an extension 
ahead of the season. I don't think that they trade him ahead of the season. I think that you are just, it, you're coasting. This isn't something that you need to apply a lot of pressure on. And I, I feel like saying handling it with kid gloves makes it sound negative towards Kuzmango. And I, I don't think it is. I think that these are just a very different situation. It feels like it is going to be player driven. And that's fine. I, this is not a situation, like I said, where you need to apply pressure and you have to have an answer by October 1st or the like by the trade deadline. A little bit prior to that would probably be ideal. Um, but that's just Kuzmenko feels like a very laid back person. And I feel like you have to match those vibes. Otherwise, it, it, it just doesn't work. And I do not, I do not like to be stressed either. When I'm just going through my life, going through work, if I'm getting my job done well and effectively, I, I don't need those outside uh, pressures. I don't, and I don't think anyone likes that being micromanaged. It's not fun. And I, you know, I think that the Flames and Ryan Huska have been able to build his confidence back to where it should be and to continue to, you know, give him minutes and well-deserved and earned minutes. They're not just giving him minutes for the sake of it. Like he's seeing time on special teams and hopefully this half of the season, you know, he's gotten adjusted to the way things work here and he moves forward and continues the success. I really just, I, I truly think like goaltending is going to be the biggest storyline of the summer because you do have obviously the Jacob Markstrom trade, but you are also looking at the Dustin Wolf contract extension. And Julian McKenzie did a mailbag. Um, I believe it was posted on Monday. And he was asked about it in kind of like his comparables and his biggest. Um, his most likely scenario was go is uh Caden Primo Primo from the Habs, which it was like a I think 1.3 million dollars for three years, which is a very fine extension. I mean, he still has to work his way into the NHL and he has to really figure out he has to get acclimated and he has to, the flames need to figure out how they're going to work with him. They're not just going to, you know, do whatever to get things done. Like it has to, it's going to be well thought out. You're not just throwing the checkbook at Dustin Wolf at this time. And that's fine. I, I don't, I, I like these problems a lot more than what we were dealing with last year because last year you didn't know who was coming in to run this team were they just gonna uh fire Sutter as the head coach and promote him to general manager were they going to bring in someone uh like Gallant who does not like young kids who's very much a Daryl Sutter or you know Who's going to take over, you know, these external candidates? Like what? There were too many questions with each scenario. This year, you kind of, it, I don't want to say it's cut and dry, but you're playing with a lot less factors. And I like that because you can kind of truly focus on those things. And I, I hope that all of these scenarios get worked out and it's better for everyone regardless of what the scenario is but coming up next we are going to ask another question of does it get better will next season be better than this 
Stick around to find out. But first, we are going to take a quick break, and we will be right back after this, and I'm going to tell you about Sleeper. We know that the flame season is over, but regardless of where they are in the standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Leon Dreisaitl or Connor McDavid or Sidney Crosby or Nathan McKinnon will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Flames fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you will get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Thanks everyone for hanging out with me today on Locked On Flames. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at JustBelmosto. When we can't, again, we're doing a lot of bouncing back and forth between the current state of the Flames versus last year and what the expectations were or the idea of the Flames. Like, was it going to be better? Was this season going to be better or was it going to be worse? Um, I just, I have not looked at the at the record, the records to compare the two, but I'm just this season was tough. Both seasons were tough. The only reason this season does not feel as bad as last year is because of Jacob Markstrom. If the goaltending was anything like last year, we would be having an entirely different conversation on this podcast, and it would not be fun. But is it going to be worse or is it going to be better next year? Or I'm going to think it's going to probably be the same, if not worse, because you have a full season <laughs> without your your defense and your special teams, really the penalty kill, that really carried this team through a lot of this year and years past. Chris Tanev played such a specific style of hockey that you aren't really going to find that in young, like, 22-year-olds. Tanev plays a very, like, I hate calling it old school, but he plays an old school style of defense, and that's, so be it. And that's really good. That's what makes him... For Stanov, I, you're missing out on Noah Hannafin, too. You're missing out on Nikita Zadorov. Granted, taking less high-sticking penalties, but you're also missing out on some offense there, as well as some size on the blue line. The defense that they have assembled for the post-deadline uh, half of this season has been not good. It has been identical to Swiss cheese. I do not enjoy watching it or their mistakes. I think we can all kind of agree on that. But you also have to look at, you know, do you try to graduate some of your Wranglers? They're inexpensive. They are already in your organization. You have the flexibility of, I mean, I'm going to assume most of them can just move up and down. With or without waivers, um, more I feel like most of them could do without waivers at this time, but 
which players are going to take leaps is, uh, you know, we're seeing Solo get some more time, which is good. Always good to see him. I think that it's time to really start integrating him into the NHL. Um, I know that we had kind of thought it was going to happen more earlier in the season, but it, it didn't. And that's that that's the way it played out. I think he's had a decent year in the AHL and playing however many of these games he plays is it's more time again, more time for him to get adjusted and to get acquainted with that NHL lifestyle that you have to have and the work ethic that we talk about so often here. Does Jacob Pelletier, does he finally, I don't want to say finally, because this year he he missed a good chunk of this year due to shoulder surgery that they weren't sure if that was going to take him out for the entire season or not. And he got some time with the Flames and then he wasn't comfortable. He wasn't playing a comfortable game. So Huska and Conroy said, we're going to send you back down to the Wranglers. You need to get, you know, reacclimated. You need to just find that confidence again. And I hope that we do get to see that at the NHL level next year. Uh, Jimmy Poirier as well. He missed a large portion of the season due to a, a, a skate laceration on his arm. And it was not, it was not good. Um, that not good at all. It was a lot worse than I thought it was uh, initially. But do you see both of them or one of them playing? They don't have to be a fixture in the NHL lineup, but are are you going to integrate them more? Are you going to like? You have to figure out a way to put pelts in this lineup next season. Like you have to. And uh, the other JP has to uh, start getting acclimated with the NHL as well. I think that he's ready. I think that it, there were conversations of him making a, more appearances in the NHL this year than Pospisil. And things did not work out that way. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. And there's <laughs> there are just so many variables for next season and they're I would say they're more stable than what we had last year last summer so I'll take it I think it's going to be I think people are going to be upset with um Conroy when he signs a veteran or two uh during free agency I think that people are gonna say well they're never going to rebuild this isn't going to be you know, what they need in order to get a higher draft pick. And that's just, just have a little faith, just, uh, just a little bit, but that will do it for me on today's episode of Locked on Flames. Thank you all for hanging out with me and make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. You can find us five days a week, Monday through Friday, your team every day. And you can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. And Nick and I will be back tomorrow as we will only have five more regular season games to cover. So stick around and uh, thank you for tuning in at any point this season. And I'll see you later.